For years, I've given Diana shit about the haunted mirror she purchased at a yard sale and then recklessly hung in an energetically charged bathroom. But the story she tells me today tops every bizarre thing that has happened to her since she brought that cursed mirror home. I'm still scratching my head about this story, and I really hope that you, dear Hainted Love, can help us figure out what the hell she saw in the mirror. Dare to question your own reality? Then listen today on Homespun Hates. Hello, Hainted Loves. Welcome to Homespun Hates. I'm Becky. I'm Diana. Did you notice that we inflect differently every time we say that? That's how you know that we actually record that every episode. Oh, to have a canned intro? Is that normal? I don't know. It's the only podcast I've ever worked on. But we have a story from Diana today, I'm told. Finally. Finally. She finally got (laughs) haunted. (laughs) It's been Becky the last several decaversaries, which we're doing out of order nowadays because we're not haunted enough, guys. Send us your ghosts. Well, no, I mean, don't. I, well, maybe not. You know what we mean. Like, just uh, right. send us ghostly thoughts, and maybe right. one will show up. Or like Lady Teal, have a haunted baby carriage shipped to Becky's house just for six months. <laughs> <laughs> While we're recording today, I do want to warn you all that you may hear some weird noises in the background here. Mm. I wish I could say it was ghost activity. We have a little problem in the neighborhood, and they're having to do some sewer work. So you might hear some clanking and some Mm. pipes moving around. I Mm. just learned that apparently somebody in the neighborhood flushed their baseball cap down the toilet and it's (gasps) fucking up the plumbing for the entire neighborhood. That doesn't sound possible, let alone possible on accident. Was that intentional? I hate my husband's stupid cap. Yeah, maybe somebody was upset (laughs) with their sports team. (laughs) You're never going to win. Screw you guys. PSA, do not flush objects down your toilet. Yeah, it will not help you you see the toilet monster coming. No, it won't. If he's wearing a nice hat. Um, (laughs) It's not gonna, it's not gonna help. He might not even wear the hat. You never know. What's the weirdest thing that you've ever flushed down a toilet, Diana? Dude, I don't know if I've ever flushed anything weird down a toilet. I've dropped my phone in a toilet. Ooh, that's the worst. Yeah, but I retrieved it. I didn't flush it because why would I flush it? Hopefully it was clean. It was as clean as a toilet can be, but it's still like, it wasn't like freshly scrubbed or anything. Like oh, that. you know what I mean? Like the, you, it was before. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't full of poo. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. My phone did not get full of poo, but it did get full of water. However, the phone that I had at the time has a feature. It makes like this strange vibration, high pitch noise thing at the same time to clear out the speakers in case you get something in the oh, speakers. that's pretty cool. So it's, a, it's like a speaker expulsion setting. So I ran that and it didn't even need to be put in rice. It was fine after cool. that. So I was glad to have that. But yeah, it's a tragedy that that women's pants have such small pockets and cell phones are enormous. People drop phones in the toilet all the time. Yeah, because pockets are too damn small in women's mm-hmm. pants. Designers, listen to me. What do women want? Pockets. Big freaking pockets. Are you kidding me? Every time you compliment a woman on her dress, she says, what? It has pockets. Designers, take a note. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, big pockets. I actually have a toilet story. I don't know if I've told you before, Diana. Maybe. You tell me a lot of toilet stories. Just a lot of, yeah, because I got a <laughs> toilet mouth. For all of you who get easily grossed out, I'm sorry. Why are you listening to our podcast? What are you doing <laughs> here, you nut? <laughs> all right. So I'm flying to Japan. Stop! No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> and I am about to get on this 12-hour flight overnight. We're actually going over the Atlantic, not over the Pacific. So it was really cool. I got to see the North Pole from the window as we flew over to see the tundra. It was so cool. Nice. I have my own little rituals I do when I'm flying by myself. I fly by myself a lot. It's the easiest way to fly. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Probably, yes. (laughs) Yeah. And I had just achieved silver elite status with Delta. I was so proud of myself, which... For those of you that travel for business, not a big deal, but I only travel for pleasure. So having achieved this for pleasure travel, I was pretty proud of myself. Well, apparently 
because I was silver status, they loaded my luggage last, so it would be the first to come out on the baggage claim. That is a cool perk. So I get on the plane, and the first thing they announce is, the plane's too heavy, some of your bags have been removed. (laughs) And it was probably your bags last in, first out. (sighs) Yeah. Mm. Well, I didn't know this yet. Mm Mm-hmm. One of the first things I do when I get on a plane, because I've got a lot of crap on me, and one of the problems with traveling solo is you have to take everything with you all the time. Especially if you're traveling internationally, you probably have a lot of bags. So what I always do is I wait until I get on the plane, get everything stashed away, and then I use the bathroom before we take off. And then that way I'm, I'm good for a while. So I get up, I go, and my period has just started. Oh, I'm like, oh, oh. oh, really? About to get on this 12 hour flight and my period just started. Ew. So I'm in the bathroom <laughs> and I have my ticket with my little sticker for my claimed bag on it in my tiny little back pocket. And I do my thing and it's like, you know, it's, well, you know, it's, there's some blood, right? Let's hope so. You don't excrete ectoplasm during your period. Not yet. Not, not anymore. We got that cleared mm, okay. up. Got so clear. I stand up, I flush, and as I'm flushing, I notice that my ticket is in the toilet. <gasps> shit. Oh, shit. I only have a split second where I'm like, should I, should I, should I grab it? Should I, I'm already in the plane, but my sticker for my package is on there. What if, just oh, what if no. I need it? So I grab it, and it's gross. <laughs> And I'm about to sit on a 12-hour flight, and I'm, like, washing it in the sink. I wrap it in all these paper towels, and I go, and I sit back at my seat, and I've, like, kind of wadded up in all these paper towels, like, stuffed in the little pocket and the chair. By the way, never, like, eat anything off the trays or out of the pockets of those planes, because people like me are there doing things like this. So I've got... (laughs) Putting your potty ticket, your toilet ticket in the back pocket. Wrapped up in the paper towel and all of that. Did you put it in the little barf bag? (laughs) Yes, I did. That would be the smart place to put it, yeah. Yeah. So, 12-hour flight, get off the plane. Seriously, I'm sitting on the plane when they are saying it's time to deboard, and I'm like, should I take it? Should Should I just leave it there? Should I take it? And I did. I picked it up, like, bag and paper towels and everything, and I get off the plane. And I go to baggage claim, and there's a sign in handwritten Japanese, which was really useful for those of us flying in from Atlanta, saying that our bags were still in Atlanta, and we Jeez. would get them in three days. Three days? Oh. Now, because I have a very paranoid mother, she always taught me to pack at least three days of clothes and all my toiletries and all my electronics and my carry-on. Oh, goodness, yes. I pack everything I'm going to need for the Mm -hmm. trip in my carry-on and all the extra stuff, the fun stuff in my packed, checked luggage. When I went up to the Delta agent, she's like, can I get your sticker on your ticket? (laughs) He said, well, you can have it, but (laughs) are you sure you want it? I opened up the bag and I pulled out my little paper towel written thing. It's like all, like the ticket is like stuck to itself at this point. You can kind of see the sticker. And I'm like, it got a little wet. She's like, okay. And then I said, karma's a bitch. And she goes, what? I'm like, nothing. You might want to wash your hands after you do that. <laughs> I mean, I know it wasn't this poor lady's fault, but... <laughs> She was the representative for the airline, the whipping boy. Yeah. She's like, it just happens. You don't have your luggage. It's like, yeah, it's great. I'm glad I have this elite status. It just happens. (laughs) So, of course, I am thinking, all right, I better keep this story to myself, right? I can't believe I'm telling it on the air. It's been over 10 years (laughs) since this happened, by the way. I don't tell really anybody until... A few days later, I am on the outskirts of Tokyo. I don't even know where I am. I am royally lost. I went looking for some art galleries, kind of found them. The streets, they don't, they don't have names. You just kind of have to know where you are. And I was with a friend, and he told me he spoke Japanese because he used to live there, but he, he doesn't really. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's different levels of speaking a different language, for sure. So we're lost. I was actually going to meet up with my cousin, for dinner later on because 
yeah, just randomly, my cousin was also in Tokyo at the time. Oh, cool. Because <laughs> we just show up everywhere. But my friend was like, hey, let's go grab a bite to eat. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I could have two dinners, whatever. Went in Rome, went in Tokyo. So we had no idea where we were. We went into this little hole in the wall sushi place and got drunk. I drank so much sake. It's crowded. We're the only Americans there. And we're sitting at the bar and like a dumbass loud American, I tell him the entire story of what happened with this ticket with bloody tampon and all. And he's just loving it. He's like, this is hilarious. He's like (laughs) slapping his sides. And and I'm like, man, I'm so glad nobody can understand what I'm saying as I'm like (gasps) shoving sushi in my mouth. And this man sitting on the bar stool next to me turns to me and says, are you all American? And I was like, oh, oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Becky, never go anywhere and assume nobody speaks English. <laughs> English is like the one, there's always a plant in the audience. I know. Always. I know. It is great when you're traveling and you speak English. You can pretty much get around. Yeah, we're really spoiled as Americans. That's why Americans are all like, I'm not learning your language. Yeah, it works, guys. You do that for 200 years and everybody else on the planet is like, fine, I'll learn English. Anyway, wonderful city. Tokyo is an amazing city. Don't worry about not speaking English. There will be plenty of people that will help you. Just be careful what you say very loudly in a crowded off the beaten path sushi bar. Yes, this is not a traditionally public story for Japan. As far as I understand (laughs) Japanese culture, it's probably not a culture where people are like, let me tell you about the time I ripped this ticket out of the toilet covered in period blood. (laughs) When I hear friends tell stories about going to Japan, I'm like, everybody there would treat me like that guy at the bar treated you. I have no filter. I'm going to tell disgusting stories. Oh, no, he was awesome. Oh, he wasn't grossed out. He just knew you were American. It wasn't an insult. He was great. He's like, yeah, I heard you talking. I was like, you did? He's like, yeah, where are you from? Atlanta? Oh, I've never been there. That feels Japanese to me. Japanese listeners, let us know. Is this what you would have picked up from the story? Like, oh, you're from Atlanta? Not, oh, you pulled something out of the toilet yesterday? Let me shake your hand. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Right. No, he was wonderful. He was talking about his trips to the States and what a beautiful country it was. And he was very, very nice. But I just wanted to climb under the bar and die. (laughs) That's my toilet story. Cool. Uh, It's not a baseball cap. I can't believe I've never told you that story, Diana. No, that was amazing. (laughs) Thank you for telling me that story. My dad had a similar experience with his house keys on a plane. He had to read into the toilet and grab him out as the toilet was auto flushing his hand went all the way down into the blue as he was pulling his keys out of the auto flush so he was just like whatever rinsed him off put him back in my pocket (laughs) wasn't covered in period blood for him exactly nope (laughs) and also you can rinse your keys you can't rinse a ticket i tried (laughs) there's a certain amount of washing you can do for paper oh man becky that was a great story And how did you know that the story I'm about to share with you for today, my paranormal experience, was a period toilet story? (gasps) Oh my gosh, I didn't. (laughs) We are just so psychically linked. (laughs) It's like our cycles are syncing up. Oh my God. (laughs) That's weird. (laughs) Not in real time, just in story time. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our Mm -hmm. story cycle. Mm -hmm. I apologize for all of our listeners that don't have uteri. I don't. You don't have to live through this in real life. You should have to sit through the story. All right. All right. If you don't have a cycle, here's some nightmares for you. Before we go into the story, speaking of things that are terrible and horrible, Mm. having to listen to commercials. Oh, gross. Way worse than period stories. But if you hate commercials, I mean, we love our sponsors, whoever you are. (laughs) But... But if you don't want to have to listen to those commercials, you can always join our Patreon, patreon.com slash homespun haints. If you think our stories are gross, that we actually air for the public, get a load of our Patreon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's too spicy, even for this. Too spicy, too smelly, too bloody. Too risque, yes. Too American. Yeah, like a baseball cap stuck in the sewer so (laughs) if you're not a member of our patreon enjoy this commercial
Well, we're back with Diana's morbid period story. It was not morbid oh. at all. It was just annoying because well, I, thought I was, was a having a paranormal story. Yeah, it okay. is. Okay, all right. It all is, right. is par- paranormal. Paranormal um, period story. There we paranormal go. Paranormal period. My paranormal period. That's going to be your next novel, Diana. <laughs> I would have read that when I was a kid and loved it. It does sound like a horror story, and it would be. And so is this. Uh-oh. So this week I was having the worst day because my cycle was just kicking my butt through my uterus. And I couldn't take any time off because I wasn't expecting it to be that day. It was several days late. I thought Amber had finally gotten me pregnant after 20 years of trying, but no. (laughs) A miracle baby. (laughs) (laughs) It did eventually come when I was least expecting it. I was exhausted. Everything hurt. Oh, I was getting ready for bed. I could barely keep my eyes open. And right before bed, I was in... My powder room. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. My half bath, washing my hands in the dark. And as Becky knows, I never turn on the light in this powder room when I use it at night because the light in there is so bright that... Well, also, you tend to go through time portals in your mirror and you don't want to see where you end up. Anyway, this is my story, Becky. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. (laughs) So you don't you don't turn on the lights because it's harsh. You don't want to like mess up your night vision. I don't. But you mentioned portals. Do you remember my previous story about this restroom? Yes. The toilet portal stories you can hear in more detail on the episode Teleporting with Toilets from season two. So there have been two stories that I've told on the podcast about this bathroom. And both times I have had an experience where I have somehow transported mentally, physically, perceptionally, spiritually, I don't know, from one time to another time, but in the same location. And this bathroom, this bathroom used to have avocado green shag carpet. Sexy. It used to have bright painter's tape blue walls. It used to have an exposed pipe going all the way through through it it used to have those little glow in the dark star stickers that you used to put on your ceiling when you're a kid all over the walls it's such a sexy powder room oh man it's always been great handle the house porn oh i know know. interior designers eat your heart out it was so (laughs) so hot and my cat gave birth to kittens in that closet my mom was sitting in that closet when she was in labor with me for like five hours so much birth Earth. It's an energetic closet. I used to keep my very first computer in there because the screen didn't get bright enough to see it in natural light because mm. it, it was my very first computer and it just it, had, it was computer. black and green and that was it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of energy has happened in that closet. It's never just been a room for clothes to get stored in. It's always been a room that was used by people and cats for things. So it's an energetic little spot in my house. But one time I remember I was sitting on the potty and felt myself suddenly suspended in space as though there was nothing underneath me and falling forward onto my knees. And I felt the shag carpet under my knees. But when I opened my eyes, I was back on the toilet. I didn't actually fall off and pee all over the floor. It was normal. It was just it was just a vision and mm-hmm. passed. And then the next time... I actually saw my reflection in this mirror. And now Becky thinks this mirror is haunted just because I got it at a yard sale. And I've had these experiences ever since I got it. I don't I don't know. But Becky says it's, it's the mirror for sure. But I was looking in the mirror and I saw a different face. A face of somebody I knew when I was a teenager. And when I looked into the room to get my bearings, which is my natural instinct, is just to look around when I see something strange. I saw the room as it was when I was a teenager because I'm living in the house and sleeping in the bedroom I slept in when I was a kid. Right. Which is an odd experience. Don't do that if you can help it. This is a very (laughs) strange experience, like generational houses. I don't get it. I don't understand the appeal. I'm out of here as soon as I can. But yeah, that was a freaky moment. But this night, this night, I didn't go into the portal. Okay. The portal came into you? I saw it. Oh, wait, what, what, what? What do you mean you saw it? So I'm standing in the dark, washing my hands. The light in the bedroom is dimmed all the way down, and there's no light in the bathroom. So I can see the left side of my face illuminated in the very faint glow that's coming from the bedroom, but the right side of my face is completely dark in shadows. And I'm watching 
myself in the mirror kind of from my peripheral vision, right? Because I'm looking at my hands as I watch them. And I'm leaning forward from my waist, leaning forward to wash my hands because I'm tall. You don't know what that's like. I have to lean down to wash my hands in the bathroom. Yeah, I have to reach um, up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you don't get water all down your armpits. but I do. Yeah. <laughs> washing my face is a bitch. I see something in my peripheral vision as I'm washing my hands. And that something is in the mirror. Oh, shit. So, of course, I glance up at the mirror. And what I see is an outline a rectangular door-shaped outline that is highlighted in a green glow, much like the background in Tron, if you will. It it almost looks like it's highlighted in neon lights, glowing green. The DOS screen on the old computer screens? Maybe. It was bright, it was glowing, but it wasn't neonish it was okay. just glowing green kind of like a computer screen i guess i didn't really put that together but it was a rectangle but it was door shaped it was door shaped and as i leaned forward a little further because i finally stopped myself from turning and looking into the room and looking around and going what's going on i finally stopped myself and i was like i'm going to observe this uh-huh. i'm going to observe this even though i'm kind of freaking out a little bit right because there's something in my mirror that's supposed to be could that possibly be there Mm -hmm. and i lean forward a little bit and inside this green door-shaped rectangular glowing outline it has almost like a 3d line drawing of a box going back towards a vanishing point like a tunnel but like a tron tunnel Mm -hmm. oh fuck exactly oh so you saw into the matrix I saw into the portal. So I was able to see all the way down this hallway and I leaned back a little bit to try and get a better view of it. And it was still there. It wasn't some weird reflection off my shirt or anything like that. It was still there and I could actually see, as I moved my head, I was able to see different angles (gasps) of this vanishing point. But as I was looking, as I moved backwards, I noticed that there was an ephemeral figure in the foreground standing in this doorway standing not really standing i can't say standing because it looked almost like a tattered sheet billowing in the wind what the fuck what the fuck did i see what the fuck did i see becky it was it was lit up with this green light almost like it didn't have a form except for the reflective surfaces So all I could see were the highlights. I couldn't see the form itself, but I could see the highlights of green light reflecting off of it. And it did look vaguely human-shaped, but it was just floating there. It was not standing, it was floating. And it looked like a combination. As the sheet billowed, it looked electronic, like TV snow, as the tatters of this, I'm going to say sheet, because that's the only thing I can think of, billowed in whatever wind was inside my freaking mirror i could see almost like the outline of it looked like tv snow like it was kind of almost crackling as the image was coming through to me oh my god and i was able to watch it for a few seconds a few seconds Uh like it wasn't just an image that appeared and then left i moved around i was able to see different aspects of it But as soon as I turned the water off, (gasps) the hallway seemed to flatten. Flatten? And then it was gone. Wait, so it flipped, like pancaked, and then poof. Like it telescoped in on itself. Instantly. So it's not like I saw, like, as the lights turn off in the hallway horror movie thing. That would have been cool. But no, it just instantly telescoped in, so it was flat instead of a hallway. It no longer had a vanishing point, and it no longer had a figure inside of it. It flattened, and then it disappeared. When I turn the water off. Oh my god. Okay, Diana, I think you just turned my entire world upside down. I turned my own world upside down. I I, I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> I didn't truly think there was a portal in my bathroom. Well, I've been telling you, but kind of in a half-ass joking way, like, hey, hey, Diana bought a haunted mirror at a thrift store. No, you... What the fuck was that? What was that? Like, did you see into another dimension? What? I don't know. (laughs) Are we really in the Matrix and you saw the doorway out? What was the figure? Who was the figure? The scientist experimenting on us. So what does it mean?
I don't know, but I think I'm going to have a panic attack. Jesus. Like, this is really fucking with me. This is really fucking with me, too. I didn't realize as I was experiencing this, I didn't, I just now, as I'm recounting this, realized the connection with the water, with the running water. So the water, which is supposed to increase activity. It's a conduit. It's a conduit, which is just folklore, but folklore usually has a basis in something. And this mirror is, of course, right over the sink, like as right. bathroom mirrors are. And it's, you've teleported into other dimensions. I, I've moved in time. I've moved backwards in time in this exact location since this mirror has been in this location. It's not the mirror that was here when I moved in. This vaguely human-like sheet shape. Did it have any resemblance to you? No. Okay. I didn't get that feeling. I didn't get that visually. It did not have any resemblance whatsoever. It didn't have a face. It didn't have a body shape. It was just... Like crackling reflections of the light. Exactly. On torn, tattered shreds. On what looked like a cloth heaped over something vaguely human-sized and shaped. But again, I couldn't see the object itself or the person... I guess you could say. I didn't see the person itself. Themself? Itself? I don't know if it was a person. I couldn't see the being or the object or whatever this was. All I could see was the highlights of green reflecting off of it. As though it was transparent, but because it was bending the light, not because it was actually transparent. So I saw its edges. It's interesting that you use that word, bending the light. Oh? So this definitely feels like something is bent there's some place where space and time is folding in this area and i don't know if the mirror is just purely coincidental or maybe the mirror is somehow attached or maybe something of the property of the mirror can bend this and the water can accentuate it but it sounds to me like you definitely i mean i'm just going off of like First thing that pops into my head, Hainted Loves, we would love to know your thoughts on this. Right? Because this is, I think this is like stepping outside of the whole ghost thing. This is like more of the, y'all who listen to a lot of paranormal podcasts and theories and all that, like, help us out here. Because if it's dead, we're good with it. But this, (laughs) (laughs) this seems like something, something is bending, something that we are not supposed to perceive you were able to perceive and the reason it's hard for you to describe it and the reason it looked so odd like it was out of a computer program is because it was your own way of interpreting something that is outside of what we're usually capable of perceiving well that makes perfect sense yes does it really oh yeah this image could have just been anything but i interpreted it as a human shape because pareidolia right but i mean it could have been a figure, but the reason you were only able to see the way light bent around it. It was interesting right. that you said that, because what bends light? Gravity, right? I didn't think about it that way. What does so, that mean? So, I mean, when you have a strong gravitational pull, you can create a wormhole, right? Because isn't don't black holes sometimes become wormholes in a way? That's awesome. You think there's a wormhole in my mirror? Well, what else would explain it? What else would explain it? <laughs> we need to call this episode Black Mirror or Black Hole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a black hole may be paired with a mirror twin, a white hole, to form a wormhole. Is a white hole like a collection of extremely dense matter? A white hole still has a center and an event horizon, but a person could never reach the event horizon from the outside because it's constantly flinging its contents out to the universe faster than the speed of light. Hmm, like a hellmouth. Yeah, exactly. So the theory would be if you disappear into a black hole, you would pop out a white hole. Right, exactly. Potentially, if you make it through all the personal memories that are stored inside the black hole, if we're to believe Interstellar, right? (laughs) I don't think Interstellar was very accurate, but yeah. I love that scene, though. That was a great scene. It was a good scene. So yeah, theoretically, according to some mathematics, a wormhole could exist between a black hole and a white hole. The reason mm-hmm. I bring this up is because you talked about space and you talk about light bending. Mm-hmm. Well, an extreme gravitational pull could bend light 
Also, we know that black holes and white holes mess with time. Yeah. In a sense, they could be portals. But what I don't understand is the connection between your water and your mirror, because I like the black hole, white hole theory, because it's not as scary as the other theory, which is that we are all part of some matrix than being observed, and somebody opened the observation window and looked in on you while you were noticing them. Okay, but why is that scary? Because doesn't that take the pressure off to be a good person, really, <sighs> if we're all just an experiment anyway? Go lays on the beach. What's the fucking point of life? No, no. I want to take, what is it, the blue pill? Like, I want to get out of that <laughs> shithole. I want to have the electrodes pulled from my head and fight the batteries or fight the AI or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> well, visit me before I sell this mirror because now I'm, I'm kind of motivated to sell this mirror. So everybody check out my Etsy shop, Fascinating Gears, and see if this mirror is for sale. It's hella haunted, apparently. It might be a portal. It might be a white hole. It might be a connection to the Matrix. But what it definitely is, is a spooky day. Homespun Haints is hosted by Becky Kielimnik and Diana Doty and produced by Homespun Haints Media LLC. Editing and music by Becky Kielimnik. Show notes by Diana Doty. If you have a ghost story and you'd like to be considered as a guest for this podcast, please visit our website at homespunhaints.com slash submit.